السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا خاتم النبيين وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا وبعد قال الله تعالى بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وأمر أهلك بالصلاة واستبر عليها لا نسألك رزقا نحن نرزقك والعاقبة للتقوى وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا فاطمة سليني ما شئت من مالي فلا أغني عنك من الله شيئا وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يا فاطمة كفى بك شرفا أن تكوني سيدة النساء أهل الجنة وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من أحبها فقد أحبني ومن آذاها فقد آذاني أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم حميدا ومسليا ومتوكلا على الله وبعد Respected brothers, elders, and sisters in Islam, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for blessing us and granting us this opportunity to come today in this blessed day to perform our Salatul Jumu'ah. I hope and pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our coming and may Allah reward us both in dunya and akhirah. لقد أقبل عام العاشر من زوج محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وخديجة. It was the tenth year of the blessed union of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam with his honorable consort Sayyidatuna Khadija radiyallahu anha. وهما يستعدان لاستقبال الثمرة الرابعة. While they anticipated the arrival of their fourth daughter. While every child, every daughter of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was amazing. Wallahi, the fifth child and the fourth daughter of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was super amazing. That is because she was the queen of paradise. Fatima radiallahu anha. In Islam, a daughter is a great bounty and honor granted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to a parent. A daughter is a great bounty and an honor granted by Allah for a parent. Imam Hassan radiallahu anhu mentioned something amazing. And he says, Girls are a source of rewards and sons are a source of blessings. Girls are a source of rewards and sons are a source of blessings. But then he further said, Rewards are in one's favor on the day of Qiyamah. Rewards are in one's favor on the day of Qiyamah. Whereas blessings will be accountable for on the day of Qiyamah. Blessings will be accountable for on the day of Qiyamah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Whoever raises two daughters until they reach puberty, Hatta balagha, until they reach puberty, then tell that father or tell that mother, he or she will be with me in Jannah like this. This means two things. That father 
or that mother will be close to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in Jannah, or one stage below him. The other hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "The one who is involved in the upbringing of his daughters." And is kind and caring and generous towards them. Such a person will have them as a shield for himself against the hellfire on the day of Qiyamah. His daughters will be a shield for him against the fire of Jahannam on the day of Qiyamah. Yet the other hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said. Anyone who is tested, and here anyone means parents. Any parent who is tested with regards to his daughters, and he or she exhibits sabr, he or she exhibits patience with them in the trying time, in the difficult time, and that will serve for him or her a shield. Against Jahannam under the of Qiyamah, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has promised Jannah on the proper upbringing of daughters, not on sons. This does not mean you should not give your sons proper upbringing, but to show you the value of a girl and a daughter in Islam, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala promises. Jannah on their proper upbringing. Consider them to be a huge blessings of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's blood lineage was continued through his daughter Fatima radhiyallahu anha. It was not continued through his sons. You know, when a girl is a daughter. Then she opens the door of Jannah for her father. When she is a wife, she completes half of the deen of the husband. When she is a mother, then Jannah lies under her feet. It is pity only we know what is the value of a girl child, and if a man knows what is the value, what value Islam. Gives to a girl, then he also would want to become a girl. So going back to Fatima radiyallahu anha, كانت البشرى بولادة فاطمة يوم الجمعة بعشرين في جماد الأخرى وقريش يبني الكعبة وذلك قبل البعثة بخمس سنين. The grand news. Of the birth of the grand arrival of Fatima radiyallahu anha happens on a Friday, on the twentieth of Jumad al-Ukhra, five years prior to the prophethood of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the year in which the Quraysh of Mecca were engaged in rebuilding the Kaaba. When a child is born, there is a common question asked by people: Who does this child resemble? Does this child resemble the father? Does this child resemble the mother? Who does this child resemble? There is a narration in Fath al Bari, which is the commentary of Sahih al Bukhari. أم سلمة رضي الله عنها mentions كانت فاطمة أشبه الناس وجها برسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كانت فاطمة أشبه الناس وجها برسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فاطمة رضي الله عنها without doubt was a replica was a what She was a replica to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in her walk, in her appearance, in her feature, in her speech, in her tone, 
In everything, she was a reflection of her dad, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. كانت تسمية فاطمة بإلهام من الله تعالى. The name Fatima was given to Fatima through revelation from Allah. Through revelation, through inspiration from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The narration comes in Daylami, narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, and also comes in Hakim on the strength of on the strength of Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إنما سميت فاطمة لأن الله حجبها وفطمها عن النار. فاطمة was given the name فاطمة because from birth she was safeguarded and protected from the fire of hell. In addition, she was known as زهراء. فاطمة الزهراء رضي الله عنها. Why? لأنها زهراء اللون. Because she was fair in complexion. She was radiant. If you look at the complexion, or you would read the complexion of رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم in hadith, you will find that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم's complexion was fair. With a twinge of redness. Remember, she was the replica. There's no word that can describe that. She was the replica of her father, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The second reason, li anha zahra tul Mustafa. She was the flower and the rose of her father, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. She was also known as Siddiqa, the truthful. المباركة, the blessed one, الراضية, the one who pleases Allah, المرضية, the one whom Allah subhanahu wa taala is pleased with. And Fatima رضي الله عنها shares a common privilege and a common name between her and Maryam عليه السلام. When we speak of Maryam عليه السلام. We speak of two qualities with regards of Maryam alayhi salam. One was al-Azra and the second al-Batul. Azra means the Virgin Mary, the Virgin Maryam. And al-Batul with regards to Fatima radiallahu anha, this has been explored from two fronts. What is al-Batul when it is referred to Fatima radiyallahu anha? لِإِنْقِطَاعِهَا إِلَى اللَّهِ It means that she, Fatima radiyallahu anha, focused exclusively towards Allah. Just as Maryam alayhi salam had focused exclusively to Allah, Fatima radiyallahu anha also had focused exclusively to Allah. Second reason, لِإِنْقِطَاعِهَا فَضْلًا وَشَرَفًا وَحُسْنًا عَنِ النِّسَاءِ That Fatima رضي الله عنها was given a degree of superiority in her piety, in her nobility, and in her beauty, in her position over all the other women of the world. Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم said, There were four great women. Or there are four great women, pious women. Asya, radiyallahu anha, the wife of the notorious King Pharaoh. Maryam, alayhi salam, the mother of Isa, alayhi salam. Sayyidatuna Khad Khadija, radiyallahu anha, and Fatima, radiyallahu anha. In some riwayah, Mention five, and the fifth one is Aisha radiallahu anha. Allah subhanahu wa taala speaks about Maryam in Quran. Inna Allah astafaki, wa tahharaki, wa astafaki ala nisa al alamin. Allah says about Maryam that we preferred you over all the women in the world. 
generally, you would find that daughters are more attached to their mothers. Daughters are more attached to their mothers, sometimes to their fathers. Al-banat qaribat min qalb al-um. Fatima radiyallahu anha has secured greater love in the heart of her mom, Khadija radiyallahu anha, because of two reasons. Reason number one, asgharu banatiha. She was the youngest of all the daughters. And you know the youngest child is normally the pet in the family. Right? She was the youngest. And number two, لِأَنَّهَا أَشْبَهُ بِأَبِيهَا مِنْ حَيْثُ الْجَمَالِ وَالْجَلَالِ Fatima radiallahu anha was the carbon copy. She was the duplicate. She was the replica of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in elegance and in appearance. And when you would look at her, when you would look at her, you would remember the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Remember, Fatima radiallahu anha is the queen of Jannah. Sayyidatun Nisa Ahlil Jannah. The queen of Jannah. Not like the queen of this world. You know, you have Miss World, and then you have, after a while, former Miss World. You have Miss Universe, and after some time, former Miss Universe. You have First Lady, after a while, former First Lady, Miss USA, after a while, what? Former Miss USA, Fatima radiallahu anha remains the queen forever. No former, a title never snatched, and a privilege never stripped. That's Fatima radiallahu anha. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam treated her like royalty. Not the royalty in our mind, but royalty in a different sense. It was not like she was married to the richest man of the time. And she was living in a palace or in a mansion. And she was showered with gifts all the time. Yes. Wealthy companions offered to marry her. But the Prophet ﷺ refused. And he chose Sayyidina Ali to be her wife. Rasulullah ﷺ, he told Fatima once, both husband and wife, Ali and Fatima, they were together. And the Prophet ﷺ turned to Fatima and he said, You are more beloved to me than Ali. You are more beloved to me than Ali. And he turned to Ali and he said, You are more respected to me than Fatima. Look how we elevated both of them. How we elevated both of them. You are more beloved to me than Ali. And O oh Ali, you are more respected to me than Fatima. Part of loving Fatima radiallahu anha is loving the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And part of giving trouble to Fatima is giving trouble to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who was not more deserving of royalty and a life of luxury than Fatima radiallahu anha? But that was not it. Because kingdom and royalty of this world vanishes. It's taken away. Kingdom of the akhirah, royalty of the akhirah is what matters. And you know what kind of royalty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what kind of privilege Allah will give her on the day of Qiyamah, other than her being the queen of the woman of Jannah? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told Fatima, that on the day of Qiyamah, when humanity will congregate, billions of people will congregate, and they will stand up, 
for hisab, for accountability. Fatima radiallahu anha also will stand. But upon her standing, an announcement will be made that, oh people, lower your gaze. Fatima, the daughter of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the queen of Jannah wants to cross. Lower your gaze. You know, in a cavalcade on people when royalty are about to walk, you have lines on the right and lines on the left. And the red carpet is spread and they are walking. Allah says on the day of Qiyamah, the entire humanity will be told, drop your gaze. Who is going to cross now? Who is going to be walking? Fatima radiallahu anha, the daughter of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he held the hand of Fatima and he said, Oh Fatima, ask of me today whatever you wish and whatever you want. Let it not deceive you that you feel that your, da that your dad is the Nabi of Allah. Your father is the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let this not deceive you. You do for yourself and I will have to do for myself. Because on the day of Qiyamah, you will stand before Allah alone. And I will stand before Allah alone. My hisab will be different and your hisab and your accountability will be different. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam instilled this in her. فَإِنِّي لَا أُغْنِي عَنْكِ مِنَ اللَّهِ شَيْئًا Remember in the court of Allah, there is no relationship. No one will avail another man. Everyone will have to stand before Allah alone. Alone. So prepare for that day. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells her to prepare for that day. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was now 35 years of age when Fatima was born. How old was Rasulullah? 35. And Fatima's arrival, she was born. When Fatima radiallahu anha was four years old, which brings the blessed age of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to that of 39 years. كانت إرهاصات النبوة تتبدى للأب. The foundation of prophethood is now being laid out. One year more for the Prophet to become the Prophet of Allah. So before that, Allah was laying the foundation of prophethood. So she would see, a four-year-old Fatima would see her dad excusing himself and going into seclusion for lengthy periods. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would go to cave Hira in worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the hadith comes in Bukhari, Hubbiba ilayhi al-khala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had loved seclusion. So he would go for a lengthy period in seclusion. And she would see Fatima radiallahu anha, that four year old Fatima would see her mom preparing food and meals for her dad. She would see that her mom attending all the needs of her dad. And then when her dad, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, would leave, the heart of Khadija radiallahu anha would long for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look at that relationship between the husband and the wife. The child is being brought up in that environment, seeing that loving relation between the husband and the wife, the mother and the father, growing up. You know, they say in English, the best thing you can do for your child is to love their mother. And likewise, the best thing you can do for your child is to love their father. The best thing you can do for your child. Fatima radiallahu anha is now five years old. That brings the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the age spot on 40 years. That period was prophesied and discussed in the previous scriptures which humanity was 
anticipating and waiting for. وَمُبَشِّرًا بِرَسُولٍ يَأْتِي مِنْ بَعْدِ اسْمُهُ أَحْمَدٍ Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam receives revelation. And he was crowned with prophethood for the lack of a better word. What? He was crowned with prophethood for the lack of a better word. To call it an inauguration is an insult to the profile of prophethood. Fatima radiallahu anha now sees her dad running and trembling and her mom comforting him. Rasulullah now receives revelation. First revelation. So she saw the Prophet ﷺ frightened, trembling, and her mom comforting him with all the, the good words. And now she is running her mind, a five-year-old Fatima running her mind. I am seeing something peculiar, something unusual. What is going on with my dad? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he now starts inviting people towards Islam. He became a Nabi of Allah and he now starts inviting. And as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam goes to invite people, little Fatima tags along with her dad. She goes along with her dad, accompanies her dad. Imam Bukhari makes mention of the riwayah that makes my hair stand. He says, is narrated by Ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu anhu. Ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu anhu said, Kunna ma'a Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fil masjid. We were with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Masjid al-Haram. It was the initial days of Islam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went into sujood. He was performing salah. And he went into sujood. Close by, there were some wretched and nasty chiefs of Mecca. The likes of Abu Jahl, Utba, Shayba, Uqba bin Abi Mu'eet. They all were standing close by. When the wretched and the nasty and the wicked Abu Jahl saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went into sujood. He turned to his friends and he said, which one of you will stand up and go to the tribe of such and such people and bring the afterbirth of a camel? A camel had just given birth. Some riwayah, it says the afterbirth other riwayats suggest the intestines of a camel. Which one of you will go and bring that? And a'udhu billah, throw it on the back of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he is in sujood. Uqba bin Abi Mu'eet, he got up. And he said, I will go. And he brought that after birth of the camel. فألقاه على ظهر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. And this wretched man threw that after birth on the back of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم. That back in which Quran takes qasam and takes oath upon. الذي أنقض ظهرك Quran speaks about that back and this wretched man took that after birth of the camel and threw it in the back of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam you know Sayyidina Anas radiallahu anhu you have mentioned that when someone would shake the hand of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When someone will make musafaha with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he would release his hand from the hands of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it was as if this person had just put his hand in a vessel of perfume. 
shaking the hands of Rasulullah sallallahu anas radiyallahu anhu saying, Rasulullah was so particular of his odor. But his own odor, his, so, his own smell was such. In those days, when they would mix perfume, they would mix it in vessels, in bowls. So Anas radiallahu anhu says, when someone will shake the hands of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he would release his hands, and after that smell his hands, it will smell like if it just came out from a bowl or a vessel of perfume. Um Salma radiallahu anhu makes mention of the riwayah. She said, once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sleeping, and he was perspiring, and I took my hands and I wiped the perspiration of his forehead. And I had a bottle with me. And I put the perspiration of the Prophet ﷺ in the bottle of perfume. Rasulullah ﷺ asked her, O oh, Umm Salma, what are you doing? She said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, I am mixing your perspiration with our perfume. For this will enhance the fragrance. For this will enhance the fragrance. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he goes in sujood. And in sujood, the blood and the stench from the afterbirth of this camel is now dripping on his head, on his face, and on his beard. And those kuffar, those disbelievers, they're having a ball of a time, laughing, scuffing, falling down, falling on each other by seeing the pain of what the Prophet ﷺ was going through. <laughs> Rasulullah ﷺ could not raise his head, it was heavy. <clears throat> Sahaba said, We were standing helpless. We could not go and remove it. They were, as I said in the initial days, the Muslims were weak. They were feeble. They were outnumbered. At that time, the little Fatima, the five-year-old Fatima who tagged on with her dad, she went forward. And with her gentle hands, with her soft hands, her passive and weak hands, removed that afterbirth or that intestine from the back of her dad, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَأَقَذَتْ تَدْعُو And as she was removing it, she started rebuking those who did this to her dad. وَسَمِعَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ سَوْتَهَا as she was rebuking them, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam still in sujood and he is listening to the feeble voice of the five-year-old Fatima. It was gradually removed. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam plucked up the courage and gradually raised his head from sujood. After raising his head, he raised his hand. After raising his head, he raised his hands and he said, Allahumma alayka bi malayim min Quraysh. Allahumma alayka bi abi jahl wa utba wa shayba. I don't have to tell you what is the fate and the result of that person whom the queen of Jannah rebuked and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam echoed the same sentiments to them. I don't have to tell you what is the end of that person. It was in Badr, and there were seven of them who were mocking and laughing and having a good time when they did this to the Prophet ﷺ. In Badr, all seven of them were killed. In Badr, all seven of them were killed. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he got up. And he held the hands of Fatima. And she is crying and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling her, she is, you know, small child. 
Can you imagine a father being humiliated in front of his children? What goes through the heart of that father? If you are being humiliated in front of your children, what goes through your heart? And when your children or your child is of that tender age, that leaves a delible impression in the mind of that child. If you are being humiliated in front of your 20-year-old or 25-year-old, it's different than a humiliation in front of your, a child. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was being humiliated in front of Fatima radiallahu anha. So she was crying. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told her, don't cry for your dad's deen. This deen of your father will reach every baked and unbaked home in the world. Islam will reach every nook and corner in the world. Fatima radiallahu anha, she was now eight and a half years old, going on to nine years old. And then came that they were subjected to three years of boycott. Look how, what difficulties came in her life from childhood. Difficulties upon difficulties. Three years huh? in confinement. The whole Quraysh, the whole Bani Hashim. But with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was Rasulullah, Khadija, Fatima, and Umm Kulthu. Zainab was already married. Ruqayya had already made hijrah to Abyssinia. So they were in confinement in that Shia of Abi Talib for three long years. Among the sacrifices of those who stood out, and because of time, inshallah, I will continue the same topic next week because I'm also here next week, inshallah. Among the sacrifices that stood out was that of Khadija radiallahu anha, the mother fought of, of these children. You know, Fatima radiallahu anha was the only child, was the only child of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in whose lifetime both her parents passed away. Khadija radiallahu anha passed away. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also passed away during her lifetime. She passed away. Six months after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So she buried both of her parents. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam buried all his children. Buried all his children. Except Fatima radiallahu anha. And she mentioned one thing and I will conclude. Those who buried her dad. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was buried, those sahaba who were engaged and who was part of the burial, she asked them, she asked them, how did you pluck up the courage? How did you pluck up the courage to bury my father? Where did you get this courage to bury the, the paragon of Allah's creation, the greatest of all human, my dad? How did you pluck up this courage to put him down? And then she said one thing, he said, the hands that touch the dirt of the grave of my father, fragrance will never be separated from that, those hands until death. Fragrance will never be separated from those hands until death. Those hands that touched the dirt and the sand of the grave of my dad. What is outstanding about her, which will come next week, inshallah, about her haya about her modesty, about her humility, and how we can put that, insha'Allah, in our lives. What was outstanding? What did she say at the time of her death? How she wanted to be buried? How modest she was? Insha'Allah, because of time, that will come next week.